Basil Chapman, I heard you're freezing up there this morning. <laughs> it is very cold, zero, yes. Zero, yeah. zero degrees. Very unusual for Boston, folks. I mean, it was eight degrees, but it felt like minus eight. That's what it said in the news. That's at the weather channel this morning, yeah. Pretty intense, man. Yep, it was, um, excuse me. Well, one of the things about it, of course, it's the wind chill. Yeah, yes. And as long as you've got that wind chill, that can really put extra coldness into the air. Oh, my God, I'm telling you. Well, market-wise, what do you think we got here? This is, this is quite a market we have. So there are a couple of things that I think we need to just talk about. I also wanted to go through a couple, a couple of aspects that you were talking about, which, which kind of fits in with what, what I'm, I'll be showing in a moment. Okay. But the most important thing is when you think of the Dow making an all-time high of 36,952 on January the 5th, and yesterday it comes down to 35,639, and that's um, 1,300. This is not a big, a, a big deal. What is a big deal is that this whole rotational aspect, it depends on which sector you're in. If you're in the wrong sector, you're, there's just no question about it. For those people that had put most of their money into something like the QQQ or the, the different stocks within the, the NDX 100 and saw some of those absolute fantastic winners going into mid or late 2021, suddenly turn down and become 30 to 40, even 50% losers. That is really tough. So it's really selectivity that we're talking about. And you can see that in the Dow, the daily, we've got that peak D. We're always looking for that fourth highest peak. Yes, it's pulled back. I suspect we're going to make some kind of an arch formation and do a retest. But the most important thing you can see just from the chart that I'm showing, here's the daily chart on the left. Weekly chart is in the middle. I haven't even got a sell signal yet in the, in the weekly chart. And that monthly chart, well, we're not even halfway through the month. Yes, there's a little doji candle, but <laughs> we've still got weeks to go. So what we are looking at is that the resistance that I showed, the Jab Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone in the weekly chart has pushed the price back from where it was. This is the third time that it's been there. And the same thing in the monthly. In fact, the monthly out of about nine months, it's tested this trend line six or seven times. Okay. And, it's, and it hasn't broken above it and it hasn't broken down, but that's showing you there's a lot of resistance. So what I am looking at here, and I'd say to subscribers to my opening call, I would not be surprised if today we start to see some of those NASDAQ stocks that have just been clobbered get get a really good rebound. In fact, we tried to, we, we tried to buy one this morning. Uh, we got it quite nicely. And unfortunately, just, well, it depends when people, some people say they got in because they got in a little late and that suited them just fine. So they're still in it, but technically we got, we, we lost, uh, three, three and a half points on a hundred and ninety two dollar stock. That's not too bad. But the fact is that now that stock is now not at one hundred and ninety two anymore. It's at one hundred and ninety seven. So that that's just a really good example to say that those very oversold stocks can have a, a chance at uh, modulating the, the weakness that's overall in the market by having some strength in those sectors. So that's number one. Number two is um, within the, the, the different sectors that I'm looking at, we've been long um, an oil service stock. MRO is the uh, symbol is Marathon Oil. What I had drawn some time ago, I'll show you right here. This is the monthly chart. There's this big cup formation. And I always love to do these rectangles We're from the March 23rd low of last year, where we actually started going along different positions. Look, these rectangle formations are formidable in terms of making, eventually making a cup formation. It's like a stair-step move. Big move up, pulls back. Big move up, pulls back. Big move up, pulls back. And now we're in leg E in the monthly chart, and my target was 18.93. And today we've gotten to 18.74. Nice. And in, in the daily chart, this is still leg C. In the weekly chart, it's leg C. And that speaks to what you were talking about just a moment ago about the oil, the oil sector. And that really is, to a large extent, it is dependent on the oil sector. It can be, it's oil service. The service can be, have a slightly different chart formation, but it, it'll be, it helps to have the oil pushing higher. The other thing that I'm looking at here is, the TLT had a huge pullback 
Uh, it went from 152.99, it's called a 153, right down to the low of 136 uh, two days ago. Now it's trying to bounce. So that, as the yields go higher, it's not exactly comparable to uh, having energy in the uh, oil, in the oil sector, but it's energy for the bank stock. It helps them. So the XLF um, had a very big move up. <laughs> Excuse me. It went from the 37 area to the 41s. Uh, we have Bank of America, and that's participated really nicely. <clears throat> We've had it for a long time from the 31 area, but this last move from about 42 going to uh, 50, and now it's at 49.14. Just it's it's reflective of this sector rotation that I'm talking about. So I consider that very important. Then the other thing that you were talking about is the dollar. So I have a particular pattern that I look at, and I've used this for years. It's the, the rectangle formation, and that rectangle formation can go a lot longer than your patience, and at some point, especially the narrow rectangle formation. So we've been long the dollar since April of 2018 and about 1907. Watch it scream up to 102.99, then come all the way down. Fortunately, our stop on the UUP, which we have held, we've only taken one little bit off at 96. And here's this rectangle pattern stuck. And the two things I've been talking about is that if you look through all different charts, there are so many where after weeks, the price goes back to within pennies of where it was. I don't know how markets do that, but they I do know. that. Yeah. Uh, look at this, 96, 94, on the 24th of um, November for the dollar of last year. And a month later, less than a month later, it, it pulls back sharply to 95 and then goes up to 96, 91, three cents away. So basically, that's like a double top. If you look at the technicals, the daily technicals are much weaker on the right side. So now we've got the rectangle formation. And the rectangle formation says there's a good chance that if it pops above, the, the, the resistance is going to come back because this is such like a magnet. It's been here for so long. But if it starts to go down and breaks, in this case, you were talking about uh, under 95.52. And so I'm saying if it closes under 95.52, you might get one bounce back into the 95.90s. But there's a chance that the dollar could actually start to come back a little deeper and that would help gold. So, yeah, I, this is a very interesting selective market. And I think the bounce is going to go a little longer in the uh, QQQs. And, folks, it's very easy to get Basil's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see opening call right into featured content. Hit that button. You are off to the races. 